right, welcome back to the next video in this series. In the last video, we got started on our start level function, and we are going to continue on that in this video. So one of the things we can do with this function is we can control how the timing is laid out when we begin the level. And what I mean by that is this has to do with the user experience. So much goes on in the background or behind the scenes in a game when we play it, which influences the uh, experience that we have. For example, we are going to give the player a, not a warning, but kind of like a countdown. We're going to flash some text on screen and say, get ready. And then we're going to tell them to start running. And we're going to add some effects to these things and just make it look nice. But it's going to be timed out specifically to a certain amount of time that is not too much. But it also gives the player uh, a couple of seconds to see what's happening on screen and get ready to play the level. And we're going to control most of that right here in this function. So if we go over to our level layout, I'm just going to create a few pieces of text. So let's double click and go down and find our text object. Let's insert one. I'm going to insert it up here. And I always forget to do that. So let's unlock whatever layer you're on. And we're actually, I'm glad that happened because we need to set up a new layer. In our layers panel, I'm going to right click and add a layer at the top. And I'm just going to call this HUD. H-U-D stands for Heads Up Display. Pretty much every game ever made has a HUD of some sorts. And we are going to be able to put uh, quite a bit of objects on the HUD layer throughout the game. With the HUD layer unlocked, I'm going to change our text objects layer to the HUD layer. And then I'm going to lock my collision layer. So on the HUD layer, I'm going to get this piece of text and I'm going to rename it TXT underscore ready. And then I am going to come down here and I'm going to change the text to all caps ready. And then the font, I'm going to go with uh, let's go with Franklin Gothic. Sounds good to me. Now the size is going to be 54, which means we're going to have to stretch this out. And then I want to, how about we make it bold and also italic. Because now it looks like it's telling us to do something, telling us to be ready. Uh, I'm going to change the color to just a pure white. And then my alignments, uh, horizontal, center, vertical, center, and the origin. Uh, yeah, let's make it center. Everything else looks good. I'm going to make the size, uh, I'm going to change it to, I'm just going to punch this in at 254 with a height of 105. Okay, those are some dimensions I had uh, on the other one I that I made and they seem to work. So we're just gonna go with uh, this size right now. And then I'm going to right click on our text object and I'm gonna clone the object type. And I'll put it down here. And I'm going to change this to txt underscore run. And then the text is going to read, if you haven't already guessed, run. I'm going to leave everything else the same because we cloned it. And then I am going to get our text ready object and add a behavior. That behavior is going to be the flash behavior. And then with the run text object, I'm going to add a behavior. And that is going to be the fade behavior. Okay, the fade behavior 
with the run selected, I'm going to take the fade out time to 0.8. So fade in zero, wait time zero. We'll change some of this in the code as well. Uh, I'm gonna leave the destroy checked because this is something that is going to be created in the code as well. So whenever we are done with it, it will automatically destroy it. We won't have to destroy it. Same thing with ready. Our uh, flash behavior, all the properties are set in the code, but it looks like we might end up having to destroy that ourselves. Now that we have these text pieces set up, uh, I'm gonna explain something else here. We've talked about this dotted line being our viewport. This is what we see. You saw when we tested it earlier and our camera wasn't set up yet, uh, we saw this section, the top left section of our castle. So what's going to happen when we set this up I want that text ready to flash probably two or three times. Then all of the player controls will be activated again and our character will start running. But I need to get this text to appear in our viewport wherever we are because whenever I create a second, third, fourth, fifth level, this is all going to be in a different location. And I need, no matter where I am, these two text pieces to be created the same place every time. And we're going to do that in our function, but we need to set something else up, and that is our HUD layer. So click on your HUD layer, and then in the properties, we're going to set the parallax of X and Y to both zero. And what this does is it makes this little area right here, this dotted line, our viewport, it makes that area face the camera at all times without moving. No matter where the camera moves, where no matter where the player moves, as long as our parallax is set to zero, anything that's in this area is going to stay right there. I'll go ahead and I'll put this in our viewport right here, in the somewhere in these dotted lines, and our HUD has parallax of zero, but we're going to start down here when we preview it. So let's preview it. And there's our text. And immediately our run faded away in 0.8 seconds. <laughs> so we will have to program that as well. But I just wanted to show you how the parallax works. Okay, our ready and our run are text objects and for them to be created on our layer, they have to exist somewhere in our project. So if you haven't guessed already where we're going to put them, I will tell you. I'm going to delete the instance here on the layer. So with this selected on the layer, delete. And the same thing with run, delete. We're going to go into our meta layout and we are going to drag our ready text and our run text. And we're going to leave them that size and it doesn't matter where they are, this isn't going to affect where they appear on screen because we're going to take care of that a little later as well. Now while we're at it, let's create a folder for our text. So right click on object types, add a subfolder, let's call it text. This is going to be a big folder. There's going to be a lot of text in this before we're done. Slide our text into the folder, and let's go ahead, if you haven't already, put our spawn player sprite in our meta folder. Okay, and we might be done with the meta folder, so I'm gonna close that up. Okay, let's go back into our function, and on our bottom section here, let's add an action and say system create object, and that object is going to be text ready. And the layer is going to be on our HUD layer that we just created. And then the X and Y, uh, I'm going to leave that at zero right now. I'm going to hit done and we're going to go back and look at something. So back on our level one layout, I'm going to zoom in here. We need to imagine what this looks like full screen. So when we play, we're going to see this amount of area. So I'm going to pull uh, another instance of this text in here just just to reference it so we got to figure out where we want this text piece to be I think since our player is going to be somewhere towards the bottom I think right in the middle both on our X and our Y 
is going to be just fine. And I know I want it in the middle on our, our X for sure, but I think uh, height-wise, I think somewhere near the middle is going to be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, go back to our functions, and I'm going to go into our create text object, and on the X, I know I want this to be in the middle of the screen. I'm going to cancel out of that real quick, show you one more thing. If we click on the layout and we go to view our project properties, remember our viewport size is 360 by 640. So our text object, the origin, we set the origin to the center of the object. So the middle of the text object needs to be placed in the middle of our viewport. So half of 360 is going to be 180 and half of 640 is going to be 320. So let's go into our function and let's set those up. So we can use another expression here to get the size of the viewport and set our text where we want it to be. And that expression is going to be the viewport. So I'm going to start typing in viewport and it brings up all these options right away. So I'm going to get the full width of the viewport. So if I go to viewport width and I select that, and then we got to say which viewport width we're looking for. And that's going to be in parentheses and in quotation marks, we're going to type in HUD in quotation in parentheses. So we're going to get the viewport, the width of the HUD viewport, and then we are going to divide it by two. We're just going to half it. And I shouldn't have exited out of that. Sorry about that. And then we're going to do the same for the Y. We're going to say viewport height. And we are going to select the HUD layer again. And we're going to divide that by two. So remember over here, we deleted all instances of our text. And in our function, we're creating it at that location. So let's preview that. And there it is. It's right in the middle of our full viewport width and height. Perfect. Now I am going to, while this is highlighted, I'm going to copy and paste it because we're going to just use these same values, but we're going to change the object. So with that selected, if you press R on the keyboard, it's going to bring up this box and say, pick the object you want to replace text ready with. Well, it's text run is what I'm going to replace it with. So now we have create text ready at that position and create run at that position. And of course, if we played it, they're both created. Run fades away immediately. Okay, let's look at that again. I'm going to preview that. So the run and the ready are clearly not at the same place. So let's go back over to our meta. And I can see that the ready looks a lot lower in its box than the run does. So somehow I clicked this enable BB code. If you have that, just unclick that. Make sure that neither one of those have that checked. And uh, you might not have had the same problem I did. So let's uh, preview that again on level one. There we go. They're right on top of each other. Very good. Back into functions. I'm going to add an action and I'm going to go grab our text ready object and we're going to scroll down to flash. Let's pick flash and you can play around with this if you want. Uh, I have found that 0.2 on time and 0.2 off time with a duration of 2.0 seconds. That is what works for me. And then we're going to add an action, system, wait. And we want to wait that 2.0 seconds to make sure it has time to finish this. And then we're going to destroy the text. So text, text ready, and destroy. Because remember, we didn't have a chance to destroy it uh, in the properties but the run will destroy in the properties. So I'm going to drag the text run below all of this so that all of this happens before we get to here. And then once we create the run, we are going to 
add an action, go to our uh, text run, and we want to start fade. But I don't want it to go right away. I want it to wait a little. So I'm just going to start copying this wait up here. So highlight it, copy, paste it. Let's move it down. So we want to create it. And then I'm going to wait, uh, let's say, 0.2 seconds before it starts to fade. And between the uh, fade and the 0.2 seconds, it'll be on screen long enough for the player to say, oh, it's time to go, or whatever a player says. OK. Uh, I also don't want this ready to start flashing and being on screen right away. So I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this wait again. And I'm going to grab one of them. And I'm going to go right before we create the text ready. And I'm going to say wait, uh, let's say, 0.7 seconds. So not quite a second. That should give us our timing to start the level. Let's play that. Ready, 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 run. All right. Excellent. So let's copy this weight. Slide one of those down below the fade start. Once we destroy the flashing ready, we're going to create the run wait 0.2 seconds, it's going to start to fade out, we're going to wait 0.2 more seconds, and then we're going to set our controls back to activated. I'm going to copy these two where we deactivated the groups, and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard, and I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to release the mouse first, and then the control after that, and it's, it dragged out a copy. So now we can go into each one of these, double click, and activated. Same thing here. So that should be our start level setup. Ready, run, and we start running, and now we can play. And uh, still have that <laughs> jump issue going on. So let's X out of that. All right, so I need to figure out why that is happening. The core of the start level function uh, is set up. I am going to end this here and in the next video we will figure out why our player is jumping weird and we will also create another function that will add some effects and uh, aesthetic to our game. So I will see you in the next video and don't forget to save.